Thank you for listening to the Dog Trainers Podcast, a podcast created by dog trainers for dog trainers or anyone who's ever fallen in love with man's best friend. Definitely. And, and shifting gears a little bit toward, I want to talk just a little bit about the first book before we dive into the second book. And, yeah. and it, it's interesting that you talk about developing that world, because again, I know that you and Jeff and everybody else with the Good Dog team and, and all the other people that I see you guys kind of collabing with on a regular basis, you guys actually took the time to develop a world that not only represents yours, but that's really kind of paved the way for lots of newer dog trainers. Mm-hmm. Like we, we have a friend who's a younger dog trainer. How old is Shona? Like in her early, early twenties, right? Like mid twenties, mid twenties, oh, mid twenties. Okay. Um, and she, when I say loves you guys, Sean, like she loves you guys. Like when, when she found out that we were having you on, she was like, Oh my God, you know, <laughs> hi Shona. Um, that's sweet. That's sweet. Um, but, but it just goes to show you guys had and have the foresight to understand because again, the bullshit is there. The pushback is there. The the negativity is there. And yet you guys, I'm sure you do realize just how impactful this can be because Shona is like a friend of ours in LA, but we, we have trainer friends who, of who are on from Dublin, who are on from Ecuador, who are on from, you know, and they're all like, like, you know, Hey guys. So the, market out here is just so different people are not at all okay with e-callers people are not at all okay with correcting dogs Mm -hmm. how do we find the words to help them and i'm just like here take this take this take that you know send the book book out or yeah (laughs) or you know or something and and it just goes to show it's an example of like look if these guys can do it this amazingly well it can be done so go and do you know And, and it's it kind of plays back to the original point of like you can do it you know stop feeling bad for yourself and do it here here's literally the formula go you know and I think it, it was important that you guys took that time and did all that. And I think that it's important that the trainers of today continue making videos and so on and keep kind of fighting the good fight. So as we come to the first book, not that many, not that many anyway, dog trainers even write books. And it's just, it's another medium. It's another way of getting information across. And like I said, I followed you guys like to no end, you know, and even so the first book, it was information that I guess I've heard you say before, but there's something different about having it in an audible format and, and having it kind of concisely broken down and everything else that it's just not the same. You still earn value out of it. And, and you know, and so I, I know that you guys had a fun story um, writing the first books, you know, so I just wanted to start with that a little bit if we could. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it was a very interesting time. Um, Laura, who was doing, my, who was my assistant at the time, and was doing uh, the whole book design. She was, I don't know, eight months pregnant, nine months pregnant. Yeah. So she's like trying desperately to put it together, and I was tackling a bunch of other stuff. And so we didn't, we didn't know what the hell we're doing. We're like, put out a book, why not? And so, <laughs> you know, we figured we'd proofread it ourselves, and. Um, and and it came out pretty good, but there were a lot of errors, a lot of typos, a lot of mistakes, a lot of things like that. And um, so then we, that was the first edition. And then we went back and we sent it out to a professional editor and they tidied it up. And um, so we did all that. But the funny part is that before any of that, because we always do things backwards, including this book, we <laughs> recorded the audio book first, first. Mm. So um, I was down in New Orleans at my, my friend's um, uh, audio recording booth, and um, we were going through, we had the first copy of the book, and we were sitting there going through it. And as, and he's, he, luckily, he's incredibly talented. He's uh, very educated. He's great at sentence structure. He's great at problem solving when you're trying to find the way to enunciate something uh in an audiobook because it to me i thought that would be an easy thing until i tried to actually do it and i was like oh this is a skill set unto itself yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah yeah but but also like pauses that aren't even there in punctuation and <laughs> and i'd be struggling and he'd he'd read it back smooth and he'd be like so when the dog comes up to the other dog it's time to, but those commas might not be there. You know, right, I mean? right, right. Just injecting them. I was like, well, why didn't I think of that? Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> so, so, anyways, he, um, Michael Zients, who, who runs Airlift Productions down there, he actually helped me and God bless him. We went through the first audiobook and, and, or the first book and started recording the audio. And as we were doing it, we were like, oh man, there are typos 
everywhere. There are sentences <laughs> that, that repeat. There, like it, it, and 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 not to be dramatic, but it was heartbreaking. You've spent right. all all the money. You've already purchased twelve thousand books, whatever the hell it was, mm-hmm. and uh, put a ton of money into promo and everything. And you're like, oh. We we didn't we didn't quite get this right, and so what in, what ended up happening is that the audiobook we rewrote it on the spot. Me and, mm. and Michael, who's who's way smarter than I am um, with grammar and things like that, and so the audiobook isn't exactly like the actual book, which is kind of fun. It's that is it's, cool. It has it some makes it special. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and better <laughs> compared to the first. <laughs> um, it, it it makes more sense. And then uh, so so we did that, and then uh, released both um, released released all the books. But we did it originally on our website. Didn't do Amazon. Mm-hmm. We didn't know. We were still figuring things out. Like, is it I better? Bigger margins on our own website. Okay, Amazon's going to take a huge cut. Audible's going to take a huge cut. But then you get down to brass tacks, and it's like, well, do you really want your part of your team spending ten hours a day packaging books and doing things like that? And so then uh, we decided to move everything to Amazon um, with, I think, the second book, closing the gap. And then this one is going to be uh, an entirely um, Amazon-based book, except we'll do some special orders for bulk stuff and things like that. So that, that's kind of the strategy with it. But once again, we did the audio first, right? So there we <laughs> oh, with, are. With this book, with the new yeah, book. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Absolutely. And um, and so we read it down, and luckily there we had already had it edited, so, so the <laughs> – the, so it's the same. <laughs> so the typos and all the silliness were were largely not there. And, so Mike was uh, happier this time, exceptionally so. <laughs> uh, and and gave me some comments. He's like, "Look at you, you're flowing, and you've got." I was like, <laughs> "Look at the pauses." I'm, I'm learning. Yeah, look at the pause. I'm, I'm learning. And uh, so, anyways, we uh, we we got that done, and then um, the Kindle book is is just about done. But what's really happening, and I have to look at it after this podcast, go back and then make the final call, make sure all the pictures that are in there, that we like the pictures, that they correspond to the story, that they they add to the story of that particular piece and make sure there's no typos and, mm-hmm. and then sign off on it. And and then it's uh, in God's hands and we'll we'll see what people think about it. That's yeah. awesome, man. And, and I think one huge thing about that first book, and I'm sure the second book will be the same way is you know the just the utter amount of feedback the all the dog trainers that i would see um who were like oh i recommend it to every one of my clients i buy it for my clients um i already told one of my clients yesterday morning you know i was like yeah you know so we have we have sean o'shea on she was and i was like you don't know but but you know we have sean o'shea on and like the second book isn't out yet but when it comes out i'm gonna buy it for you because she's having the same sort of struggle getting comfortable correcting and it works yeah. really well with this dog but she just doesn't do it yeah. so you know so i notice all kinds of trainers even now now that the second book's on its way out and it's been years since the first one came out they're still like oh i order them and i give them to every board and train that goes home and you know so how, how was how, how to what extent was the book just like amazingly well received uh to be honest we never expected dog trainers to ever ever um uh, start selling it to their clients or handing it out to their clients. Um, especially because, you know, if it would have been a book that would have been, uh, maybe titled and marketed in a way that was a little bit more, um, generic, um, how to train a good dog, you know, Mm -hmm. and maybe my name's there somewhere, but it's like the good dog way, right. It's, it's our brand. And so I was Mm -hmm. like, I can't really see a lot of people being able to do that or comfortable to do that. But I was, I was really wrong. Um, folks jumped into it and it started slow. We started to get some small orders and, um, and we were getting great responses back from owners. And for me, after coming through the, the trauma of typos and the book being a wreck at first, I was like, Oh God, you know, what, what are people going to think? And, and, it ended up like from, from the owner perspective, it really started just, just, it, 
it's kind of like our gig. We don't do anything where it's like shot out of a cannon, like whether it's our DVDs or anything else. We don't just like, it's really kind of a slow build and we do our thing. And hopefully the quality's there that people talk about it and it continues to grow. And if it's like, it's like anything else, if the value's there, people will find it and they'll tell, right. they'll tell family, they'll tell friends, they'll tell clients and things like that. Me and Laura, when we originally did, we we just thought it would be another product that might add like a little bit of revenue value, and yeah. yeah, and and maybe help some folks out. But then we saw we saw trainers handing them out and then we thought, well, what if we started handing them out? And then we started oh. getting feedback back that mm. wow, uh, you know, we read your book and 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 total game changer we're, mm-hmm. we're thinking differently we're we're we understand what we're doing wrong um and as i mentioned it's a book of missing pieces it's it's all the gaps that you have in in your thought process maybe in your application or your what execution of something it's it's really great at filling in those gaps. I go. Can I read you something? I I, I, I grabbed my phone twice and it's not because I'm being rude, but um, I had to write the back cover yesterday. And, and so um, I'll, I won't give you the whole thing, but it just says like volume one before it, this isn't your typical dog training book. If you're looking for step-by-step training protocols, you won't find them here. What you will find are many of the missing pieces of the human dog puzzle. Mm. <laughs> 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 pieces that somehow have been overlooked again and again. Uh, think of this as a human and dog decoding manual, a simple but profound guide to tackle what standard training books often miss the why behind your dog's behavior and your own and, and your own. Uh, because without understanding the why the how of training is severely undermined, if not completely useless. And it goes on and it says, uh, you know, well, it, it it says a bit more of what you said down the line. But it was wow. just funny when when you said that. I was like, That's "Did he funny. read this?" That, like, <laughs> that sounds familiar. Well, yeah. Remember, I told you. Remember when you think a good idea was your idea, but it was really someone else. <laughs> we're, we're all just sharing them around. They're all just floating yeah. around. Yeah. It's all in the it's all in the ether. Well, let me yeah. ask you this then. Uh, so, so the, the first book, obviously, being such a big success, and and again, not just. I'm glad that it was like a success in the like in the sense of like it it sold a lot you know and i i know that's that's obviously very nice and everything else but also yeah. just that people just got so much value from it you know and yeah. and just knowing you as you know and following you as long as i have i i know that that's definitely the the part that you were really like okay wow you know i didn't realize i was going to change this many people's lives and it's important to do and also i know i think you guys again having done videos and stuff me and brent having doing like a podcast it's there's something very valuable in terms of like, how can you help as many dogs as possible throughout your career to have something that's concrete and it's kind of forever. So the book now is done and you can move on to the next thing, but the information isn't lost. You don't need to go back and have these conversations again. And you know, it's, it's there now. So Mm -hmm. what, what was the biggest inspiration would you say to write the second book? Mm. Well, I've, I've, as you know, I, I think you guys know the, the structure of how I, I can't sit down and write a book from, you know, zero <laughs> to 250 pages. I would blow my head off. I can't do it. But what I can do is take ideas that, that are interesting, provocative, that, that stimulate me, and then write a post. And then typically the way the, the, the formula works is um, we'll do that for a year or two. And then I'll go back and I'll start to look through the ones that I thought were most impactful. I'll look at shares, I'll look at likes, I'll look at comments, but I'll also read it myself and feel like, okay, what do I think about it? And then what I'll do is we'll save all of those. It's it's a very time consuming process. People think we're like, he just puts out his blog and it's all done. I'm like, boy, do I wish that was the right, case. Right. <laughs> so, so then we take all the pieces. We, we, we have, you know, tons of legal pages, uh, where it's like, you know, this one, and then we grade them all through three or four different people. Everybody grades them. And um, we, we, we start to decide, okay, here's the bulk of it. And we're probably going to shoot for an extra 25 to 30 pieces than we need in case we have to throw some out. And then what I do is I rewrite them all which is mm-hmm. another way that you want to like go in and, mm-hmm. and put a gun in your mouth because it's one thing to be excited about an idea the first time, you know what I mean? And be mm-hmm. like, Oh, cool, cool. Like this is really like, uh, like, Oh man, I can't wait to get this out into the world. It's another thing where you're like, okay, 
it's still interesting and still exciting, but there's not quite as much momentum. So you have to really put your nose to the grindstone. And, and of course, of course it's going to live forever. So you want to make sure it's got the quality behind it. So right. that's, that's basically the way we do it over and over again is that over, over the course of a couple of years, um, I write, uh, you know, pieces, blog posts, quotes, whatever it is. And then we put them all together. And then as a team, we decide what's going to be the best, what's going to be helpful. And I had Shelby and Marta in New Orleans who are mm-hmm. our, our trainers down there. Mm-hmm. And basically I couldn't look at it anymore. I tried, mm-hmm. I, I, really, I tried yeah. for a year. And after a year, I was like, I, I don't want to look at it anymore. I can't deal with it. And I said, Shelby, Marta, you guys are tasked with deciding, you know, for better, for worse, I promise I won't fire you, but <laughs> for, for better, for worse, you guys have to figure out what's going to go in this book. And so they did, and they based it on what are the questions we hear the most from clients? What do they typically struggle the most? Which is great because they're on the ground floor with it, you know? And so, so we did that. And, um, and, and for me, the, the, the concept is like, you know, I'm not going to be around forever. Um, and I probably won't be training dogs forever. So my, my goal is to try and get out everything that I know or think is valuable and get it out into the world. So by the time I want to step back, if I want to retire, if I want to go do something else that I can feel comfortable that I didn't well, for one, really morbid. I didn't go to the grave with any of the ideas, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I also didn't just selfishly hold on to things that could help people. Right. And, um, so there's actually a third volume that will eventually come out, and that'll complete, wow. like, that'll complete a the trilogy. Uh, yeah, and we'll hopefully do a box set on that, and that'll have a little bit more of a of a training concept. Um, which was originally supposed to be in this, but then the book got too long. So we're, we're going to do the training in a separate section, but yeah. that, that's kind of the, the whole thing is like, all right, we each wake up and we've got a certain amount of time during the day. Um, how can I try and make sure that I do the best I can to take mm-hmm. the ideas that I've got and get them across in a way that helps the most folks and not to right. sound like, you know, you know, Mother Teresa or anything, but that's, that's what motivates me and gets me doing the thing. And, and I think that I could, I could honestly feel comfortable that after those three books and the DVDs and all the other posts that live on social media, that I could walk away and be like, you did it. You did a solid job, man. You're, you're, yeah. you're okay. You know? That's amazing. So, so that's kind of where, where that's at. And then to be honest, I have about 20 other books I'd like to write. Uh, that, that are not necessarily dog. They may or may not be, but they're not necessarily dog. It's like lesson, lessons learned from dog training. <laughs> it's yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. That would yeah. be one. And uh, like dog dog owner survivor guide. Uh, uh, sorry, dog trainer survival guide. Things like mm-hmm. that. That'd, That'd be, be fun. fun. That'd, That'd be, be fun. fun. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of different things I could jump into, um, but I think this the last the last one will close the chapter on this this concept, and I think we've encompassed enough of it. For it to be, you know, if you dive in, do your work and really study it, you should you should be in a pretty good space as a dog. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm.